just don't be shy. You can move up. We just left that. Well, I didn't want to say that. We were pushing them to get get up this close. I didn't want. I didn't want to say that. So good morning, everybody. Um, it feels like fall outside. Not quite. Don't get your hopes up. You know, we still got a little bit to go for that. Uh, don't forget to turn off your cell phones, please, so they don't sing to us this morning. Um, this week, uh, on Wednesday, is drum circle. So bring your drum, your rattle, your whatever, and we'll gather around and do something. <laughs> And then on Thursday, Victoria will do the uh, Course in Miracles. And then on Friday night, Susan Edwards will teach the Ascended Master class, and it is Serapis Bay. Yay, me! Okay, Serapis <laughs> Bay, so that's Friday night. And then um, Saturday and Sunday is the Akashic Records uh, class. Starts at 1 o'clock. There's still plenty of seats available if you feel like that's something that you want to do. Then next Sunday, Miss Marlene will be bringing our message to us. And we'll also have potluck. So uh, it'll be a busy, busy day next Sunday. So uh, Crystal uh, is not here this morning. So I'm going to ask Don if he'll play secretary and write down the prayer requests, please. And I'll start by putting my name on the list. You're already on there. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? You put me on the list. Okay. My like husband James. James. Sandy. Sandy. Ada Marie. Wendy West and her family. Randy and Victoria as they are traveling today. Mm -hmm. so. The Bears in East Tennessee. They're having it rough. Mm -hmm. uh, the shift in energy that I think a lot of people are experiencing kind of mm. smooth that out a little bit. We'll just send a lot of love so it won't make you be so <laughs> Love hell. Okay. Anybody else? That's me. Jennifer. Jennifer. Yeah. She's much better, but no. Okay. Don't get all the kids starting back to school, being away from home and mom and daddy for the first time, that they'll make good decisions um, <laughs> while they're away. Part of learning, I guess, part of learning. Anybody else? All the unnamed requests, and of course, all of our uh, four-legged friends, the women, the birds, the feathers. Okay, all right, so we'll just take a deep breath. We are thankful for today for the ones who are here. And we ask that all of the angels, our guides, the healers, the masters, go out and touch each name that is on this list. That there will be healing physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. There will be calm. There will be peace. There will be joy. There will be release for those things that no longer serve and seem to be causing the uproar. So we ask that you surround us, keep us safe during this day, until we come back again. So it is. So it is. So it is. Mr. Michael. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How is everyone today with these wild energies <laughs> of evolution? Surfing. Surfing? <laughs> Sleeping. 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 Some of both. Well, today, it's been a real interesting couple of weeks for me. Um, I think some of you were here last week. We talked about surrender. And today, we're going to click into another level of that, um, kind of point into some real specific um, parts of surrender and, and areas that, that I've been taken and continue. It's like, wow, this, this whole thing is opening up before me to go deeper in my own life. So I want to share that with you today. Um, and also before we get 
started on that. I've had a, just a really fun journey with um, the angels the last week or two. And I don't think I've ever done angel therapy in here with meditation in our service, but today we're going to do Michael, who's going to be one of the, the energies that I'm going to call forth, he loves to bring his, he's got a vacuum, a cosmic vacuum, and um, you're going to, we're going to work with Raphael and Metatron as well, and they have kind of their own tools, so just invite you just to allow them to sweep your aura of just some of these stagnant energies that we've been kind of playing in these last couple of weeks as, as we ride the wave, so. I'm going to turn on a little music, and we shall get started. It's not too loud. everybody just to close your eyes for a few mo moments. And let's take a couple of deep breaths together, starting with a nice deep inhale. And exhale. Remembering that each time you take a nice inhale, on the exhale, just set that intent just to release and relax and surrender. Any stress, tension, worry in your life, in your body, in your mind, in your heart. Let's do one more together. Just take this time to really listen to the currents within your energy as we invoke the beautiful archangels who are here to help us to see fear and love, to really understand the difference between these in our life, to help us learn how to let go our attachment to fear so that we can open up to the brilliance, magnificent light of love that is within each and every one of us. So with your willingness, to use this beautiful cosmic vacuum to move down our crown chakra and through our energy body to clear away any cosmic static debris, old emotional energies that are just hanging around that don't serve us any longer.
from this time or space or another, from this life or another. We ask that this healing and this clearing take place in all directions of time for your highest good. Noticing is this beautiful Michael's cosmic vacuum works through your energy field. up your spine just little by little. shows me that some of us have been holding in our ear chakras, we've been asking and asking for guidance and some cosmic debris maybe in that area. shining a mirror. If you've been holding on to any fear of change in your life, it points to our root chakras and just you could take a nice deep breath and just relax your root chakra, relax your butt muscles. With your permission, then you can have access to clearing and shining.
thank you Archangel Raphael for supporting our healing process today. together for today's message. Everyone could take one last deep breath.
blessing it is to have each and every one of you here today, as always, and a little cozy group we have with all the kind of August last minute traveling. Today, what I really, I just kept being drawn to this energy of um, how, you know, life is so amazing. It can be so amazing, but then at times how we just stop, you know, in those moments and let our fears, let our insecurities, let our preconceived notions get in the way from really exploring and letting life just unfold and happen. Does anyone do that? It's <laughs> been many years doing that and still find myself, it's, it's, well, I catch myself in those moments of, you know, where I just, I hold and I hold back. And um, so in, in, in the essence of all of the evolution that's going on with us and that life is calling for us, it's calling for us to be in joy, it's calling for us to be on purpose, it's calling for us to step into greater and greater adventures in our life. And um, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I get the calling, fear comes up. And one thing that over these last years, I mean, pretty much everyone in here either does energy work, is studying it, or has some experience. So I'm going to talk in a couple different paradigms with this. But over the years, what I've found, you know, in doing energy work and opening up my chakras and, and, and creating space to feel open and loved, lovable, and to, to give love, is that I have to feel open, have a sense of openness within myself. And those times when I close up, that's when I want to go in the closet or I want to step back or stay in my house or, you know, that kind of thing. Sometimes there's a process to that. But how many of you, you, you may, maybe you're on a journey of getting ready to start something new and all of a sudden you just feel like something just closes up? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's, it, it, it can be a natural reaction to something that we have a preconceived notion about or we've been through some trauma in our lives about. And you know, last week we, we talked about surrender. So I'm gonna, that current is so important in this discussion today because when we feel that, that energy within us, like our heart begins to close up, what happens? We, we, we even lose energy, like we just become, we kind of shrivel up inside, but we get drained and tired and different things happen when we, when we, when we close up and sometimes you're not even aware of it until days, months, or maybe a year later that you actually have closed up and, and gone inside. And I think sometimes we, we need those to kind of go inside and do some soul searching. But when we're in these just pivotal moments of starting something new or opening up to greater love in our life, whatever form that may take, you ever then come across these things and then all of a sudden you just, you know, clam up, close up. One thing that I've learned, um, I've had this countless times of this happening over and over again with me, is that in the moment that I get really excited to go and, and do something, and all of a sudden my, my sense of love for life, my sense Um, and that's a lot of times when depression and those kind of things hit. And what I've found through experimenting with this over and over again, I've found that this has been such a teaching tool for me as to 
learning first of all not to judge myself that I don't have to fix this right now because how many of you sometimes you're like I want to fix this now I want to be done with it let's move on let me get to the core of this I've over the years I've had to move through that in my life because I, I let's just be done with this you know and move on but every bit of this has taught me and continues to teach me things that are like diamonds you know they're like incredible experiences that, that I get to share with others and actually understand what's going on instead of be in the intellectual about what's going on. Um, and life is putting me even more and more so on that journey where these pieces are coming together. So in those moments when your crown shuts down or you, you go from this feeling of love to all of a sudden fear, I invite you in those moments, because this is a when this happens is where you you get to choose. You get to choose whether to stay closed up. Even if you're not aware of where the closures are happening, you, it doesn't may really make any difference. It's just kind of helped me understand what energetically is going on in my system when that happens. But really, all that you have to do is say. In that moment, I choose to stay open. Because so many circumstances in life, our bodies, our chakras, our thoughts, everything just so close up. Because we're afraid either something's going to happen, we've had an experience that has showed us typically we get a negative result if we go there. And so guess what? That preconceived notion, the second you go there and maybe you're, you're getting more and more ready to break through, that chakra will just go, whoosh, it'll close down just like that. Instantly on the thought where that tr trauma reappears um, on the thought of it. It's just like an intent, boom, and then whoosh. So how do you, you take some practice. I've, I've found with myself that it takes practice over and over again when I'm in that moment where um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share some, some examples with myself, but when I'm in that moment of ready to just open up into something new, and particularly in relationships, because I've had and experienced so many um, traumatic click you know close down and so I have to consciously these last couple of years I've really had to work on it consciously go stay open Michael now stay open stay keep the heart open stay open stay open stay open and remind myself kind of be take that command center role take the father role the divine masculine role within me and go stay open you don't need to close anymore it's safe for you to stay open. So I invite you all to play with that. Because everyone has some area of your life where you enter and you feel yourself starting to shut down. Life is about learning to stay open to everything. How many of you have experienced, um, and like, just whether it's trying new food, whether it's dancing, whether it's art, whether it's any kind of new life experience, just the thought of it, go, ooh, you know that feeling? You're like, oh, I'm not artistic. Well, guess what? There's, if, if that's one for you, you close down in that moment. You close down the life, close down your energy, close down the source energy. Um, all of those things happen in just like a fraction so what if in those moments that you said, I may not know that I'm good at these things, but I'm willing to stay open to try it anyway. Even if your body's screaming at you, this, is, this, this isn't good, your mind's saying these things, what if, this is what I've had to do in my life, literally do it anyway, so that I can retrain myself not to close, close up. 
Because if I close up, I'm ready to go home. See y'all. <laughs> and we're not here just to pack it up and go home. We're here to enjoy life. We're here to live it to the fullest. We're here to um, participate, which has been a big word for me. Because for so long I try, I've tried to do everything on my own because I didn't feel safe and secure to invite other people in. Because I thought, oh, if I did, then guess what? Then the, the pain's going to come again and all these things ripple effect and then I'll just be back to where I was. Well, that's a story. If I choose to continue that story, guess what? I'm just going to continue that story. So what's worked for me the most is learning how I close up. Actually really honestly being aware of recognizing when I just shrivel up. Because in that moment is your opportunity. That exact moment. Even if you have to write yourself little affirmations or put something up in your house to where you can help yourself remember those circumstances when that happens that you just have to switch it right then. I'm willing to stay open. And, and notice what happens in your body when you do that. Notice. Because what you'll find, you may have to feel a little bit of pain that, that arises by staying open when that traumatic trauma or PTSD or whatever from whatever it was is trying to close. But that's part of this experience. That's part of learning to stay open. You have to see what it is that keeps you wanting to just lock up shop and go home. Because until we get to the bottom of our own lock them up shops and go home, <laughs> you know, it's going to keep happening. And there's no judging about it. But if you want to really participate and live with this life, and I'm speaking as an active one on this journey, every day is, okay, I'm ready to take this next leap of faith. And I'm willing to let my heart, even if it hurts, go through and stay open through it. Because I know now from experiencing it over and over again that it's going to be amazing. But it's still, that, that still happens. So for me, it's been a lifelong practice. And really learning it these last five years, really getting, oh, wow. This, I've, there my heart just went slam. You know, my, my connection to infinite wisdom just went slam. My feelings of feeling safe and secure just went slam. And now I'm just all feeling afraid. So imagine if all it is, because that's, that's what I'm learning, all it is is staying open. If you stay open, you stay open to the infinite flow of divine consciousness and love and energy that does not run out. It never runs out. And the more I learn and, and demonstrate this in my own life, the more and more that I'm able to do. I don't... Um, this last couple of weeks, I'm, I'm like, yeah, the energy's crazy. I have more energy than ever, because I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm training myself not to close, because this, these, these waves of energy that come in, you feel this energy that's, that's wanting to help us expand, but when you close shop, here comes the pain, here comes. The all the, the cycles and symptoms in the body, here comes all of that stuff. You allow yourself to start a pattern of remembering to stay open. You stay open to the flow of the divine consciousness, the love, the energy that keeps you moving forward. What if it's really just a choice to stay open? What if? 
I invite all of you to try this out in your own lives, to go out into your life in those moments where you close down and say, you know what, I've done this. Let me try to stay open in this area that's, that's a discomfort for me. Because what I've particularly learned is that those areas that are the most discomfort for me are the ones that, that are waiting for me to learn something absolutely magnificent. The best, the best golden nuggets are from those that I'm most terrified of and that are the most challenging to keep my heart and keep my mind, my connection to the divine consciousness open. So what might it take to do that in your own life? I know for me, having some sort of regular practice, like infusing a daily um, practice kind of starts the day with, okay, a check-in, you know? And then it it's easier to stay a little bit more on course with um, being connected to the source within that center. That's what's worked for me and continues to work, and I go through different cycles and things with it. But I invite you to try it. Because this energy right now is just going to it's going to get more difficult unless if we surrender and be willing to stay open because staying open is going to allow you to come into your purpose, your sense of purpose, your sense of joy. It's going to guide you that way if you stay closed when you, you're, you're not going to hear the messages. That's what Michael was showing me during the meditation. A lot of us have been backing up in our ear chakras because we've been asking for help. And then the fear from feeling like, oh, no, I can't do that. I shouldn't do that. Of life, this, this week, this, uh, the angel said, you need to clear your ear chakras a couple times this week. So I've been playing with that. And on the inception, I've had some of the clearest work this last week I've had in a long time. So I invite you to really try some of this stuff. Now's the time. Not tomorrow, not a week from now, not a month. I've sat in weeks and months and even years on some of this stuff. And it, it, it will just churn and churn and churn and stir. You know, another thing that's that in, on the heels of this discussion is that all these crazy thoughts that we get it's not about getting rid of them. It's not about meditating them away. As part of being human. So what if instead of meditating when you're going crazy in the moment of your day, taking a breath and just kind of giving it a giggle? Because your mind, no matter where you're at, is always going to have stuff going on. Always. It's your relationship to your mind that creates the resistance. So if you're constantly telling yourself, I have to be better, I have to do the right thing, I have to um, get my mind clear, I have to clean my house, I have to do this, I have to do that, your relationship with your mind is a warrior, it's a battle. And boy, that's, that's something that has been a, a strong thread in my life. And, having to learn to, you know what? This healing journey is a process. Every bit of it, you know? My thoughts are swirling. then they're going to they're gonna eat you alive. Then ate alive most of my life with it. And the more I go down this journey, I'm, real, I'm learning to have a loving relationship with my mind and my body. 
and my emotions. Because we're not our emotions either. The emotions are the kind of juicy vibration of our thoughts. They're just kind of mirrors of different dimensions of the same thing. But we're not that. That's the human. So I know it can be so easy to get caught up in it all because it can be so strong. It can, it can take over everything if we have that relationship with it and identify that who we are is this human thing, this human vessel. It's only a vessel. We, all, we know this, but applying it can be kind of challenging at times because it really takes a rigorous practice of stepping back from all of that and creating some space. And yeah, meditation can be fabulous from creating that space because you could learn how to step back and look at it and go, wow, all that stuff's spinning around. Am I going to just bring it all in, or am I going to just let it be? And then from that, that um, ability to create that place to let it be, can we choose then what are important things going on in the mind and not? I know it can be a bit challenging, but I invite you as well to play with this um, with me now because I'm seeing just incredible things happening within my own life and openings by just creating more and more space between it's not that 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 I'm not paying attention because I am because I'm I'm learning to love all of my emotional the human self this human I can love it and I can I can see it but I choose not to sit in it any longer those years of sitting in it taught me how much I had identified with all of that and how I have a choice, how we have a choice to identify with our thoughts and our emotions um, through, you know, setting, this, setting the day, how, how, you, how you choose to interact with that. And you may, you know, sometimes we kind of fall, in the, fall in, the, in the lake, so to speak, you know, back into stuff, but that's okay. Then you pick yourself back up again, and you know what? I'm not my emotions, but they're, ta- they're always telling us something. Our thoughts and emotions are always telling us something about our belief systems. So if you're willing to step back, then you can actually look at them and, and go, okay, what, wh- who are you and what do you need from me today? What, what's the need here? What's the belief that's operating in my life right now? And there's nothing more satisfying to me now at this point in my life than being able to step back. And, and, and you know, there's times that, that I get into it, but more than ever in my life, be able to step back and go, you know what? Okay, here's all the stuff racing. Here's all the stuff I'm feeling. What's important, what's not? And just really have this separation. Can you feel that, just talking about it, about creating a separation? that you are divine consciousness and that you can separate, have this, um, some, some meditations call it the zero point, um, you know, where, where the gap, where you create a gap so that you can actually be divine consciousness in this human body and still interact with your mind and your emotions, but that they don't run you. That's, that's the enlightenment. I think a lot of us, um, we've learned early on the enlightenment is this kind of first stage of enlightenment is like, okay, we are energetic beings, you know, and learning that we're bigger than all this. But then the next stage of enlightenment um, is that learning to the identification of actually what that process actually is. Who are we? And how do we integrate our fullness into the now? That's, that's a different thing. Those are different. And it, it takes some practice. That's why we had thousands and thousands of years of different yogis and beings and different kinds of gurus and masters that sat in the caves to figure a lot of stuff out so that we don't have to do that anymore. 
They sat with their shit, their garbage, for years and years and years to learn how they're not the shit. And we have so many books and tools to help us learn that. But then it takes practice, because that's where the key with all this stuff in life is a practice. Probably never stop saying that even to myself, because it's so important. It just give ourselves a break. Life is a practice. We don't have to be the greatest now, because we already are great. It's all that self-talk that's telling us that we're not great. So when we can identify with our source, which is believing, experiencing source operating in our vessel, then we can begin to create this gap. And it's a regular practice. The more I do it, the more powerful it gets. The more powerful it gets, and the easier it gets. Um, because the separation makes it easier. You're not in all of the, the goulash of this human experience. You know? So the next time that life offers forth and you enter a situation and maybe you get tired, maybe you get anxious, maybe you get fearful, maybe you get a slew of whatever negative emotions, watch and feel and connect into yourself of how your energy shrivels, shrivels up. And then take a moment and go, you know what? I choose to stay open and watch what happens. Take a couple breaths, activate with your divine masculine energy, activate. I choose to stay open now with an exclamation point. And practice, and practice, and watch what happens as you enter into these new ventures. Um, it's going to show you and change. It changes everything. I have these last couple of years, I feel like that I've been, actually it's more than a couple, I would say it's probably about eight years, I've been in a constant, and some of you may resonate to this, a constant confusion as as life continues to evolve, um, and I tend, I get confused when I try to figure out what's happening mm -hmm. from the human perspective. When I back off, create this um, separation between who I really am and all this stuff that's going on, the confusion goes away. Because there's so much that we're processing through as we're going through this evolution that if you stay identified with it all, oh my gosh, it's, it's terribly confusing. And it, and it, and it will be. Because it's, it's like a spinning um, trash container. You're just moving through all kinds of stuff that we even pick up in our day-to-day -day life that we don't even know about. We don't even realize what we pick up in our day. You know that our, our minds just hold on to information. And it's way more than you could ever imagine. And all that stuff is active somewhere. So what do you choose to do with all of that? Some of it's useful, some of it's not. And I'm learning right now how important it is to really create and solidify this gap between who I really am and what this human experience is. It's so powerful. Nothing that I've ever experienced on my journey. Um, all the energy work, all this intuitive stuff, this is the most powerful. It trumps it all, in my experience. The, it's, it's like taking it to a different dimension. Because I'm, I'm, I'm choosing to disidentify with this human experience. It's just a facet. It's not who we are. And there's an intellectual side of that, and there's an experiential side of that. The experiential side evolves 
as you take, and again, I'm going to say this over and because I invite everyone in here to, to really go out into your life in any area that you notice yourself begin to shrivel or get afraid. I choose to stay open now and watch what happens. Miracles. Miracles. Because when we choose to stay open, what are we really doing? We're seeing all of life as precious. We're seeing all of life as amazing. When we choose to close, either we, we begin to see ourselves as not good enough, or we're judging an external component, which is really basically judging ourselves anyway. So watch what happens when you do that. It, it, it's like instantaneously accepting divine love in your life and all of those around you at the same time. It's powerful. So I'll take a breath on that. And with that, just today, remember, if you could remember any one thing, that you are the absolute essence of divine consciousness now. All this other stuff is just a facet of your human experience. It is not you, exclamation point. Now take that out into your life and watch what happens. If you practice it, it will shift everything. My boat is being rocked to the core, and it is my wing. It's just incredible.